I moved to LA and things crumbled for your boy. Like I'm talking about, I'm talking about crumble, depression. I I had never, ever, ever been depressed in my life until I moved to LA. History is being made in this very moment. Now let me make sure, let me make sure we good, make sure the, the mic is nice, make sure I'm comfortable, make sure I'm looking good, make sure I'm sounding good, make sure the levels are right, you know what I mean? Um this is special. This is a this is a special moment for me. I pray to God it's a special moment for you as well. I appreciate you being there with me, making history. Uh, hold on, look, look. In real time, y'all got to make sure, because, you know, I'm working out the kinks as we go, because we just got to do these days. You know what I'm saying? We just got to do I had to put the phone in airplane mode. Um, because I haven't been doing for a very long time. And what, and what I'm talking about is, I'm talking about the fact that I've been, I've been had, I've been having this podcast in mind on on my list of things to do uh, for a very long time now. And, you know, I have been procrastinating on this and, and I know why is, you know, I'm, I'm the perfectionist, you know, I'm the perfectionist in the circle, I'm the perfectionist in the group, uh, I'm the perfectionist who needs everything to be done before I do it, which is, which is odd, you know what I'm saying? That's a, uh, that's something that's really, uh, masochistic even in a sense, you know, like I, I have these plans and, and the fact is I, I continue to plan on top of plan, on top of the plan. And then before you know it, I have an even bigger plan with no action, just bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, with zero actionable items <laughs> that I've really, you know, um, taken. So, you know, this is this is major. This is major that we're actually doing it right now. So, you know, without without further ado, wait, before this uh hold on. I told y'all we're gonna do it in real time. I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna stop this take and do a no a new one. You know, we we gonna get out of that perfectionism. It's uh it's a disease, you know what I'm saying? So let me plug this this laptop up real quick. You know, cause it's a it's a disease that we have. Um, but like I was saying, without further ado, I want to welcome you to the first episode of the Will the World podcast, hosted by yours truly, Justin Darrell Williams. You know, a lot of people, you know, they know me as Jazz Will, and and still may call me Jazz or Jazz O or Jazz Will, which is which is cool. Like I'm not, I'm not like completely removing myself from from jazz will but if you haven't noticed I have begun to uh get back just to you know what what I like to call the the origin of me you know like my birth name a lot of people don't even know that my government name my government my government name is Justin Darrell Williams so you know, a lot of people I grew up calling me Jazz for short. The only people who really called me by my first name, uh, probably my pops from time to time, but even he called me Darrell. But um, there's a reason why, there's a reason why I'm moving forward with just using my name, you know? And, and one of the reasons is I started to feel like those that, that know or knew Jazz will, quote unquote, um, they would they would box me in, you know, and I think even even deeper than that, I would box myself in because of who jazz was or who jazz is or who jazz used to be and who jazz has become and and all the things that I've done and um you know the the different arenas that I've been in, you know, creatively career wise like all these things you know that that were tied to jazz will i really i really kind of felt like you know smothered by it in a sense because the 
the trajectory of the things that I have in plan moving forward, you know, um, it requires shedding of the old me. And, <laughs> you know, I, I had an idea of, of what I wanted to talk about in this first episode, you know what I mean? And, and uh, I want to say shout out to y'all who responded. Every single person who responded to the post that I made, uh, what was that, a month, a month and a half ago at this point? You know, time be flying. Uh, a month and a half ago at this point, when I, I posted on Instagram, I was just asking people, you know, if they had any specific topics that they wanted me to get into, you know, once I launched the podcast. And and just a quick backstory, and I'll get back to it, a quick backstory to, you know, why I wanted to do a podcast was... Um, because I wanted to share the knowledge that I have, like, you know, the the wealth of knowledge that that I've, you know, garnered over the years of me filming and doing photography and editing and producing and all these things. So I wanted to share that knowledge like creatively and career-wise and business-wise and entrepreneurship, et cetera. And then, and I'm still gonna do that, but what happened was. I realized that you, the people, you know, whether I am close with the people who responded or just have, you know, um, surface level relationships, like whatever the case may be, followers, you know, if, you, if you're if you a fan of my work, whatever the case may be, like, I, I love y'all for real. But what I noticed was people actually need help in in their personal lives versus their professional lives um and i would be selfish in ignoring that fact because you know i've been selfish in the past with things i've done you know creatively like even even musically you know um the beginning of my music career was really selfish like in hindsight, when I look at it, because it was all about what I wanted to do, what I liked. You know, I, I, I'm i a fan of Lupe. I'm a fan of of Jay-Z. I'm a fan of, you know, uh, Papoose. I'm a fan of, you know, people who who just giving you bars, bars, bars. And like like Hove was the, the genius to, to figure out how to relate the genius to the masses, you know, I dumbed down my music to double double my dollars. Um, but I I hadn't reached that point in my creativity. Like I was just like, man, you either gonna get it or you not. And I'm not dumbing it down for nobody. Like I'm giving out, <laughs> like I've been blessed with this gift to do double and triple entendres. And, and if you're not getting it, you just not getting it. And that, it was a selfish approach. And with this podcast and with my messaging, with the branding and everything that I that I do moving forward is really with the foundation of being of service. So if everything that I do is to, to be of service, then I have to stay true to that. So I can't just I can't just stick to my idea of what I want this to be when I'm doing it for the people and the people are saying this is what we need. Like that's what that's what reading the topic said to me. We need this from you. So, here we are. You know what I mean? So, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, we're we're going to talk about the entrepreneurship, we're going to talk about business, we're going to talk about film. We're going to talk about photography. We're going to talk about methods in which you can be better, create creatively and things of that nature, you know, but, but we're going to create space for that. But right now we're focusing on personal development. You know, I, uh, I wanted this first episode to really be a vulnerable one and a transparent one to set the tone. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're going to have guests on here uh today it is this this episode would just be me to kick it off um but i want i want it to be extremely intimate extremely transparent extremely honest and vulnerable and um 
you know, uh, one of the things that's been speaking to me lately, circling back to why I'm, I'm just moving forward with Justin Durrell, is I want to unbox myself from even the the unboxed idea that, that Jazz Will was because even Jazz Will doing all of these things, but even in that, you still may see me under the certain light that you've seen me in. And now that I'm moving in not even a completely different direction, but just in another direction, um, I want I want things to be fresh. You know, it's like it's like a, a snake shedding its skin or or the butterfly coming out of the cocoon, you know, and I think that a lot of people feel like me or or have been in my position and they have been afraid to shed that skin for whatever reason. You know, I think a lot of times um it has to do with not wanting to disappoint someone or upset someone, you know, uh, the fear of failure, you know, like what if this new thing that I'm pivoting to doesn't work, you know, um, and 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 you have to sit with that failure in your mind uh, of it not working, not only with yourself, but with the people as well. You know, it's the fear of proving someone right who said, I, I told you that wasn't going to work or or I, you know, I, I, I told you that idea was crazy. Like you've been this for X amount of time. Why in the world would you drop that and go do something else? You know, and that that really has been resonating with me lately. You know, because I've done, a, I've done that in the past slightly when I decided to move. Like, cause you know, for those who don't know, I'm from Houston, and I moved to Los Angeles, and Part of the reason why I made that decision to leave was me needing to be in a new environment. You know, home is home. I love home. But the problem of home is it's too familiar. And when things are too familiar, we get comfortable. It's just it's just human nature. And, and progress doesn't come in comfort. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. And, and, you, and the thing is, we even think that if we, are, if we are here in our comfort, and some may even call a plateau, that we can just remain on this level. But the fact of the matter is, if you're not going up, you're going down. There's no in-between. Like, literally, there's no in-between. So... If you don't make that decision to get out of your comfort zone, to embrace change, then you will never go up. You will just go down for the rest of your life. Like literally, you will just, it's just like the idea of putting money in a savings account. You aren't really saving that amount of money because every day that money sits due to inflation, it becomes worth le worth less and less. As just fact, this is fact of the matter. And the same thing is is in life. If we aren't making an effort to move forward, to progress, to learn more, to to challenge ourselves, you know, to do things outside of our norm, then we're we're going to get worse, even when we think we're doing okay, or we're we're just in this constant plane of comfort and our idea of success. So we have to we have to be able to challenge ourselves and and step outside of of the things that we know. So even when even when I made the decision to move, I literally had people asking me like, "Why would you do that?" Like, "Why would you do that?" I remember um my, I, I guess we would call it my supervisor at the time when I was uh, working at Kinder Morgan in Houston. Uh, and I had, you know, the meeting. I was like, yeah, guys, I'm leaving. I appreciate y'all. You know, like the, you know, the sad stuff, you know, it's like, oh, I appreciate y'all. And they were like, oh, you're leaving. But she was like, why would, like, what are you doing? You know, it's like, why would you leave? It's more expensive there. 
do you have a job there? It was like all of these things that were were sort of fear mongering to make me stay in my comfort. And that was one of the reasons I had to break away. And, and I had to pursue my dreams. I had to pursue my goals. Going back to even, you know, like procrastination, there had been years leading up to that moment where I was saying that I was going to move to LA. Every year I was like, I'm going to do it this year. Or every year I was like, uh, when the year passes, I'm like, uh, next year. It's December. Next year. Until I finally made the decision, like, nah, I'm, I'm moving. And then I was moving in, in less than a month. I sold my house the day we listed it. Shout out to Joe Jack. Boy, Cole. If you, <laughs> this, this ain't even a paid ad. Look, if you are in the Houston area, holla at Joe Jack. He, he gonna take care of you. Trust me. Um, but yeah, so, you know, and, and there are so many people who who don't want to do that. They don't have the courage to do that. And and it's really sad. And and I and I pray to God that I can inspire the person to make that decision. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a move. It could be, it could be a career change. It could be, you know, anything that you want to do. Like, like I had the the pleasure of uh filming Ava DuVernay the other day and and she's someone that I really admire and look up to because she didn't pick up her camera. Her first time picking up a camera was in her early 30s. Now, just think about that. So many people believe that there's an age limit, a ceiling on whatever they want to do. So they'll say, oh, I'm too old or, oh, that, that time has passed. I can't do that. I can't do this. Like, yes, you can. You can do whatever you want to do, like literally. You can do whatever you want to do in life. And what's crazy is I always, <laughs> I always used to laugh when I heard people say that because I'm like, man, that's so cliche. Like, man, I'm I'm never gonna be that person who's sitting in the chair and just be like, boo, boo, boo. Cause everybody was saying it. It's really cliche. But I see now that it really is true. Like, think about it. Any and everything in this world is here because somebody said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to create that. I'm going to make this happen. Literally everything, everything. So why when it comes to you or or us, we all of a sudden think that because it hasn't been done, we can't do it. That makes no sense. That makes zero sense. So going back to the story, I decided to move to LA. And I don't think many people know this, but I had this, I I told myself, I said, I'm gonna give myself one year to make it. I'm gonna give myself one year to make it. And if I don't, I'm gonna just move back because I can always come back home. Like I was like, I can lose everything that I have, and then I can just come back home. It's fine. You know, I, I tried, at least I at least I could say that I did it. What happened is I moved to LA and things crumbled for your boy. Like I'm talking about, I'm talking about crumble, depression. I I had never, ever, ever been depressed in my life until I moved to LA. I had never, I'm gonna say that one more time. I had never been depressed in my life until I moved here. And, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people talk about LA and it being like a place of, you know, like draining energy and, and, um, you know, it's a lonely place and all of these things, which, which may be true to, to a certain extent, but I don't blame my my trials and tribulations that that I've gone through since moving here on Los Angeles. It really was the the byproduct of me moving out of my comfort zone. Because what happened was growing up at home, you are accustomed to certain things. You're accustomed to your friends, your family. 
when you see your friends and family. You're accustomed to doing certain things, going to certain places. Like you're accustomed to all these things. Like your life is what it is. It's it's familiar. Like you you could go around the city, you could find things in the house with, with your eyes closed. Like that's that's what we're accustomed to, and that's what we love, that's what we gravitate to naturally. So when when I moved and I stripped those things away from myself, it forced me to feel things that I had never felt before. Like even for example, I remember sitting in the studio for hours on end, days on end, weeks on end, wondering why couldn't I make a song? Why, why even when I put a pen to the pad, Nothing was coming out. I really had to sit on it and think. I was like, it's because I don't have the things that I'm accustomed to. So, like, back at home, I had a studio at the crib at home, too. So, like, I would invite people over. Like, I was I was using, and, like, you know, not, you know, figuratively speaking, but I was using my friends and my brother, Jono, as inspiration. They were my muses to my music. And the environment that I would create, I didn't even know that I was creating it to be creative, but I was creating this environment in which my creativity became dependent upon it. So like, think about that. Like, Think about the things in your life that if you strip those things away, how would you be able to create or how would you be able to do certain things if these elements of your life were removed and and then you had to 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 come about that process on your own and in a, and recreate another method and that's what i had to do i realized that i didn't have what i was accustomed to i didn't have I didn't have my inspirations that I was accustomed to. I didn't have the muses that I was accustomed to having. So I was literally, you know, people call it writer's block, but, you know, I, I think it was just I didn't have the tools that that I was used to having. You know what I mean? I'm used to, I'm used to chefing it up in the kitchen with a wok, and now all I have is a microwave by myself. And I wasn't to recreate the same meals. And it was really that simple. And it took me a while to understand that, to come to that conclusion. But it was important for my development because we're not always going to have those things that we could just use to be able to, to move ourselves or push ourselves forward. We have to find a way to be internally driven, internally creative, self-made, self-initiated, self-starters, you know, and and of course, like, I'm not talking about being anti-collaborative and things of these things of that nature. I'm just really speaking to the fact that all we have at the end of the day is us. We is just this one human being, this one soul, this this one person. The reflection in the mirror is all we have. And the people in our lives are bonuses, gifts from God, but there's no guarantee that those gifts will always be there. So what will you do once those gifts are removed? Whether you remove them or somebody else removes themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you do in that moment? And that's that's what I had to figure out. I also dealt with, you know, me not really having, uh, you know, the the social environment that I had back home. You know, that's why I was saying like a lot of people say L.A. is a lonely place, and then and there is some truth to that. Like I, you know, just being honest, I I still struggle with with how. Um, how my relationships are in in LA versus back home in Houston. Because back home, and this goes back to, to being familiar and accustomed to things, back home I'm accustomed to seeing people once or twice a week, talking to people, 
you know what I'm saying? Feeling the energy, getting the love, all these things. Like, that is what my idea of friendship, family, relationships looked like. It looked like I'm looking at you in person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but LA is not like that, at least in, in in my case. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's something that I oftentimes still struggle with, but but six years ago, it was really bad. It was really bad. So that was another another thing that led to to uh my my stint of depression. And then I was I was working a job that I didn't want to be at. And I'm telling myself, like, bro, you moved to LA to pursue your dreams, but here you are kind of doing the same thing that you were doing back home. You know, so I'm doing that, coming home after being in traffic for an hour and a half. You know, uh, wifey at the time, she, you know, she could see what I was going through, uh, but it it really wasn't much that she could she could do to help. You know, it was um and I would cope by I get home and and I was I was disguising it as decompressing uh but I'll pour me a glass or two like I'm pouring up every day of the week you know what I'm saying and it wasn't it wasn't to party it was to decompress because I had all these thoughts and emotions that I was dealing with and trying to figure out you know what I mean uh trying to navigate through that I had never felt before. Like, I'm going to say it again because people who know me probably can't even fathom it. I, for the first time in my life, was depressed. Like, seriously. You know, I, I remember, um, I remember calling, so I used to, I used to use the the car, you know, the car ride home, you know, an hour, hour and a half I'd be in the car. I used to use that time to call home. So I call, I typically, it'll be like an order of who I probably would talk to like the least amount of time, so to the most. So it'd be like my pops, probably call my brother, and then I call my mama last because I know we gonna be on the phone. Like she gonna be like, "How far are you from the house?" And I'll be like, oh, "About thirty minutes." And then you know we'll talk for the rest of that thirty. And she'll ask, "How far are you from the house?" Oh, about ten minutes, and we'll talk for the rest of the ten. So, but one day in particular, I remember calling my brother, Jono, and he said something that made me laugh so hard. But the sad part about it was. It felt weird when I laughed. Like I went from laughing all the time, cracking jokes all the time back at home, back in Houston, to being in LA three months later and it feeling strange when I laughed like that. Like it literally felt weird. I don't know if I don't know if anybody's ever been through that um, or or experienced that. But I definitely did, and it's it's a day that I will never forget. And you know, um, I, it was it was a moment in time. It was just it was just crazy. And and in in the moment of me doing that, I'm literally laughing, thinking to myself how weird it feels, and I'm also thinking like, bro, what are you going through? What are you going through? Like, what are you doing? How how did you get here? You know what I'm saying? Like, I I wouldn't say it was like rock bottom, but a, again, it was just it was a space that I wasn't used to being in. You know, it's like being in a foreign land, and you know, you're trying to figure out how to read directions to get to where you need to go. And uh, yeah, that was tough. That was tough. Um, that was tough, but, but uh, I'm not, you know, the beauty of it is, because one thing I want y'all to know, nothing is ever all bad. In everything, there's an opposite. So you, if, if something is bad, terrible, whatever, there's always a bright side to it. Like it's, 
I know, you know, we may not want to hear that at certain times, but but it's the truth. There's always a bright side to the darkness. It's just about how you you look at it. It's all about perspective. It's all about what you choose to focus on. And, you know, nine times out of ten, I, I look to to focus on the bright side and, and everything because what I found in life, you may not know why it happened today, but you know, you in the future, you will look back and say, oh, that's why that happened. And thank God that it did. Like I have countless, countless examples of that happening in my life. You know what I mean? Um, like, cause even, even when I was playing for, you know, like playing for the Globe Trotters, I remember going into uh, what ended up being my last season. I remember going like literally three days before training camp um, and before I would sign like the contract. I damn near broke my broke my foot. Uh, I had re-aggravated an injury that I had, you know, in, in college, where I fractured I fractured my right foot. Like, and it was a freak accident, freak accident. I just literally got the rebound and just came down bad and couldn't walk. Still went to training camp, and I was trying to do the most on essentially a, a broken foot, and. Um, I didn't, I didn't sign the contract at the time that, that we were planning on me to sign because I wasn't able to perform. But even the day that I, I injured myself, I didn't cry. I didn't hold my head down. I, I literally said like, there's a reason why, there's a reason why this happened. I don't know why. I, I even remember talking to my homeboy, Curtis. I, on the phone, as I was icing the foot, I'm on the phone with Curtis. I say, "Bro, I ain't even, I ain't even tripping, bro." Because one day I'm, a, I'm gonna know why this happened. And lo and behold, if that trajectory, if I would have, if I would have continued down that path, let's say, I don't feel like I would be where I am today. Like there, there have been so many things that I have been. Um, exposed to once I decided to put the basketball down because I feel like my true purpose is in this arena not those arenas you know what I'm saying um forever grateful for the experience but I can't even imagine my life being any other way than it is right now you know and like that's that that goes back into, you know, this this idea that one we have it all figured out, which we never do, and then two, being able and having the courage to pivot, because even though like the globe trotters and you know like there were some other other things that happened as well that I won't talk about, but I still could have decided to continue to pursue basketball professionally, but my heart was in a different place like how many how many of us and i and i want us to be honest with ourselves how many of us have our hearts in a different place but we haven't decided to take that leap like like i said whether it's fear of disappointment uh whether it's fear of upsetting someone whether it's doubt fear of being successful what, like how many of us don't want to do or be where we are right now but have not decided to move and i don't i i i, I swear i i don't i heard somebody say to me just now in my head it's not that simple but the thing is it is that simple it's a simple decision to say i don't want to be here anymore i don't want to do this anymore i am tired of this maybe 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 we're not maybe we're not tired maybe we haven't reached that point Maybe that's what it is. Like maybe, maybe that's what we need. 
Maybe we need to be tired. Maybe we need to be at, at, at our wits end. Maybe we need to be burning both sides of the candle. And then, and then we have to literally just keep going until that flame is not burning anymore before we say, okay, enough is enough. But what if, what if we don't do that? What if, what if we don't kill ourselves mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and drain ourselves doing something that we don't want to do? What if, what if we don't wait until it's too late and just make the decision right now while we can? Like, it's something that, that I encourage everybody to do. And I'm going to be honest with you. Just because you make that decision doesn't mean that it's like everything is going to be peachy keen and 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 you're just going to just step into to your idea of of uh your your dreams and and your new life and all all of those things without without any pushback, without any obstacle, without any trial, without any tribulation. You're going to face those things because like like think about it you've been you've been moving in one direction for maybe your entire life maybe maybe years maybe a decade and then all of a sudden you say uh i'm going to go backwards like like even think about this like if if you are a car if your life is a car on the freeway and you're doing and you're doing 60 think about the what has to happen for you to to stop the car and throw it in reverse. You know you're not just going to be on the freeway doing 60 and then all of a sudden you uh, and then go back like that like no. It's going to it's going to be a process. It's going to take a lot of force. It's going to take a lot of determination. It's going to take everything that you have to stop that vehicle of your life that's moving in the direction that you don't want it to go to, to change its path and redirect it. It's, and, and, and I'm, trust me, it's, it's not easy. But what I decided was I would much rather spend my time, energy, and my life redirecting and repurposing my life and myself versus doing the thing or things that I don't like to do and I'm and I'm wasting my life. Like and I and I don't know about y'all but one thing about me is I would I would much rather fail than live with regret. Like regret is the worst feeling in the world. The worst feeling for me at least. Maybe not for you, but for me at least, regret is terrible. Like, like even when I moved, I said, if if I fail, I could go to LA and I could I could lose everything. I could lose everything. I'm talking about zero dollars in my account. Homeless even. But one thing, I will be happy in the fact that I made the decision to move and just see and just see what happens because it may work. <laughs> like, like we spend, we spend so much time thinking about what could go wrong instead of what could go right. Like we never think about what would happen if plan A works. As soon as we make plan A, we make plan B. Like, as soon as we make plan A, we make plan B. Now, I get it. Like, I don't, I don't want, I don't want you to take things like so literal. You know what I'm saying? So I, I understand the idea of a plan B. But what I don't understand is focusing on what could go wrong with plan A 
and moving and living and believing through your action as if plan A already has failed. But like, plan B's, all right, whatever, cool, but have that plan A be your focus and say that plan A has to work or it has to work, like like Neo says, like Neo Davis said. It has to work or it has to work. So have that courage. Have that courage to take that leap. You know, like, trust me, I've I've... I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot since since moving here. And one of the things I tell any and everybody who who I uh who I happen to talk to about about my experience since moving to LA is I at this point and and it's been I've been this way since since the first year. It, it'll be 6 years in November. I'm grateful that I made the move because I'm a better man today than I feel like I would have been if I hadn't left. Because I've experienced things that I know I would not have experienced if I would have stayed home. Like I I felt pain, I felt disappointments, I I felt sadness. I felt lonely. I felt all of these negative things, all of these things that don't feel good. All of these all of these things that you wouldn't wish upon anybody. I felt all of these things and I know that without feeling that, without experiencing those things, then I wouldn't be me. I wouldn't be Justin Durrell. You know, it's like, and, and, you know, it, it could be, it could have been ignorant of me to, to think that my entire life was going to be one of no test, you know what I'm saying? Uh, one in which there's no, no struggle one, you know, and, and I'm, and I'm talking about, I'm talking about ambition I'm talking about like because my 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 ambition and my imagination is probably bigger now than it was even when I was a child but you can have you can have the ambition and you can have the imagination and you can have the the grand dreams but you also have to know that it's going to take a certain level of hard work a certain level I'm, I'm not gonna say struggle because struggle isn't the word I don't want y'all to misinterpret anything that I'm saying but you have to be prepared to exhaust everything that you have in order to get what you want even if even if you don't have to exhaust you have to be prepared to exhaust because if you're prepared to exhaust everything that you have, then you won't give up. You won't you won't start to question your decision or decisions as soon as you get some pushback. As soon as you have have this grand idea, uh, you want to open up an event e event space and and you've bought a building or all sort of things, and then all of a sudden. Uh, there are some code violations and or maybe you're dealing with uh, the neighbors who who are petitioning against you and things of that nature. Like if you get anything like that and you're not prepared to give it all you got, you're going to quit. You're going to give up. You're going to cut yourself short from the life that you dream of, the life that you desire, the life that you really you really deserve to live if. You're putting in that work to get it. Like, I, I feel like we all need to be, you know, if drinking is your thing, we all need to be popping bottles, like like the the good stuff. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I I, I remember <laughs> my my homeboy James, J, you know, I call him Legan. He he over uh he in Australia playing ball right now. I remember when 
we used to take five, six dollars that we had and buy a, a pint of Burnett's vodka. Like we we pulled together six dollars to buy a pint of Burnett's so we can split before going out to the club. Look. <laughs> But now, now we sipping Class El Zoo. You know what I'm saying? You know, I know everybody like Casamigos. I like Class El Zoo. But my point is, I, I I feel like everybody should live like that. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever, whatever you're into, I feel like we need to be experiencing the best of so we can have the best life experience. Like it's it's all a culmination of things, you know, the best of this, the best of that, the best of that, the best of this. And I'm not talking about just things, but it all helps with our life experience. And I I truly feel that that life is on the other side of whatever decision we are afraid to make. Like legit. Like it's 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 right through that door that we are terrified to walk through. And you know, it's I this just came this just came to my spirit as well. We 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 can't be afraid to cut people off. We can't we cannot be afraid to cut people off. And I'm not talking about like blocking somebody on Instagram or or blocking text like no 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 no. I'm talking about removing ourselves from either a circle or a situation or what whatever what have you so we could elevate. Separation leads to elevation. It's that simple. And then a lot of times we are afraid to do that too because we've known somebody for all our lives or like, look, every chapter of your life does not require you to bring the old words from the previous chapter. Like just, just imagine if you had a book, if you were reading a book and every time you went to a new chapter, they had, they had parts of the last chapter in it. Like, the majority of chapter three is also in chapter two. Like, no, we need the new. We need the new. We need to move forward. We need to progress. And if certain people in our lives aren't serving us, aren't serving our future selves, like not our not not our now self, our future self. Because our now self is low-key our old self. So if they aren't serving our future self, then we have to make a decision. And it's not, like I said, it's not about blocking anybody from your life. It's just about moving in a different direction. Like you don't have to love anybody any less. You don't have to wish harm or evil or or or, or push any negativity towards that person or people. You can just simply say, this is what I'm on now. That simple, because it's about you. It's about it's about how you feel when you go to sleep at night. How you feel when you wake up in the morning. Like I remember how I felt waking up in the morning to go to a job that I hated. I I I remember that vividly, and I know how I wake up now. And how I wake up now is a complete 180. And it's something that that I want for everybody, man. Like, <laughs> like, like I, I y'all probably, y'all probably gonna hear a lot, hear me say that a lot. Like, I want that for everybody. And it and it literally just comes down to you, to you making the decision to move, making the decision to go in this direction versus the direction that you've already been going, the direction that you're familiar with, the direction that hasn't been feeding your mind, body, or soul. 
look, this, I, I think, I think that's that's what we gonna stop, man. Because I'm, I'm gonna just keep going, and and I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna just keep repeating myself, but I do want you to to know the importance of how one simple decision could change your life forever. Until next time, beautiful people, peace and love.